Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a book review on The Spell Book of Katrina Van Tassel by Alyssa Balambo. The Spell Book of Katrina Van Tassel by Alyssa Palombo is a feminist retelling of Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, told through the point of view of Katrina Van Tassel. Katrina's world changes the day the new schoolmaster, Ichabod Crane, arrives to Sleepy Hollow. The two fall in love, sneaking out into the woods late at night to conduct their forbidden love affair, while also hoping the legendary Headless Horseman never falls upon their path. It's on All Hallows' Eve that Ichabod disappears, and Katrina fears he was caught or killed by the Headless Horseman. Katrina seeks the help of her best friend, Charlotte, who the town gossips is a witch. The two friends investigate the disappearance of Ichabod, and Katrina will do anything in her power to figure out what mysterious entity took away the man she loves. I seriously really freaking loved this book, you guys. And the thing is, I wasn't really quite sure what to expect with the book and where exactly it would go. What I knew going into the book, I knew that it would definitely be a very feminist retelling of Sleepy Hollow pretty much, you know, giving C Katrina Van Tassel a voice because seriously in, in Washington Irving's original tale does she does she even have a line of dialogue I'm trying to think if she even has a line of dialogue because for some reason because I'm, I'm trying to think about when I first read the legend of Sleepy Hollow I, I feel like I kept waiting for Katrina to you know do something or say something that she never did she was really just the object of, of lust <laughs> for Ichabod Crane essentially and that's all she was she had nothing else going for so I did I definitely went into this knowing it would be very heavily focused on her giving her a voice giving her power and influence over events transpiring and, um, and yeah, one of the most exciting aspects about this book that I wasn't quite positive about, I was very curious what Alyssa Palombo, am I pronouncing her name right, you guys, Alyssa Palombo? I have a feeling I'm pronouncing her last name wrong. But the, what I was really excited about what Alyssa Palombo was going to do, I was really curious how she was going to tackle the Headless Horseman. Um, you know, because in most retellings, it... Sleepy Ho of Sleepy Hollow, it is. It's it's all very fantasy and supernatural, and that the headless horseman, it is literally a guy who is headless and he's been resurrected back from the dead, or whatever you know, which is the case in like um, um, you know Johnny Depp's version of Sleepy Hollow, even the the TV series starring Tom Myson, the headless horseman was. Uh, was brought to life, you know, resurrected through witch magic and what whatnot. So, I was curious if, if what what Alyssa Palombo was going to do with the headless horseman? Would he would he be resurrected from the dead? Was he really going to be, you know, a headless dude running around in the forest, going after people and decapitating them? Or would there be a more logical, logical, rational explanation for things? And that question is kind of what made this book very exciting, you know, and, and kind of traveling with Katrina and her friend Charlotte, traveling with them through their investigation as they're trying to look for the missing Ichabod Crane and trying to figure out, you know, is the Headless Horseman, is he for real, is he not? And uh, another thing that I particularly loved about this book is how grounded in historical reality this book was. Because a lot of times, Sleepy Hollow, it, it's never really grounded in much of a historical setting sometimes when you think about it. Not only Irving's original tale, but even something like, um, you know, Tim Burton's version, Johnny Depp's version. Um, you, you, a lot of times you kind of get the idea that it's somewhere up in New York, um, and it's a little town, but a lot of times the town of Sleepy Hollow comes across it comes across as very otherworldly and mysterious and Alyssa Palumbo did a really good job kind of balancing that she she gave her version of Sleepy Hollow she 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 gave it an otherworldliness you know there was a sense of it being otherworldly and kind of just out there you know and but at the same time she really grounded it in historic reality right after the American Revolutionary War. Um, 
because major historical figures are mentioned numerous times throughout this book. George Washington is mentioned, Benedict Arnold is mentioned, Major John Andre is mentioned, and then yeah, there's even a funny little moment in this book that you find out that Katrina's dad, that he had really high lofty expectations and that he wanted to marry Katrina off to to a great man and that he was really hoping he could get his daughter to marry Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> so that was a nice little part in this this book to find out uh, about Katrina's dad that he, he was kind of disappointed Katrina didn't marry Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> so there are there's a lot of historical characters or, or figures that are mentioned that really ground it in a more firm historical context and there's also a lot of mention of, you know, the characters, you know, they have concerns about where their new country is going. Because this is, this book does take place sometime literally right after the American Revolutionary War. The characters have concerns and frustrations. Where's things, where are things going? Yeah, even George Washington, um, he's, he's stepping down from being president. And so the, the people of Sleepy Hollow are like, well, what do we... What are we going to do? He's the only president we've known. They don't really have an idea yet of democracy, <laughs> so they're concerned about that. Um, so yeah, there's there's the historical reality placed there that that gives this book, you know, a bit more realism, you know, other than just the whole supernatural idea of the Headless Horseman running around. And yeah, also adding to that historic reality is also just Katrina's concerns as a woman. You know, she's a woman in a society that's governed and controlled by men. Where does she fit in that? How can she secure her own her own place and whatnot? And yeah, she has her own dreams and desires that she would like to do. Um, and yeah, that's where the the romance between her and Ichabod comes into play, um, and it's 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 rather modern for the time. It's rather progressive for the time, because Ichabod and Katrina they they come together. They they see each other as as equals, and their their little love story it can almost be a little cheesy on occasion, you guys. I'm not gonna lie, their romance can read a bit cheesy on occasion, but I still was loving it. Um, they see each other as equals. Uh, he really encourages her to to write because she has a natural talent for telling stories, telling stories of the area around Sleepy Hollow, including the story of the, the, the Headless Horseman. And yet, she's always telling all these stories to Ichabod, and he loves hearing the stories, and he really encourages her to you know, go out there and, and write a book about those stories. And that's kind of the, the running thing that's happening throughout this novel, that every now and then she, she picks up a, uh, 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 some ink and paper and she, she jots down a story. It, it gives her life meaning and purpose. And, and so he encourages her in that way, and then she encourages him because he sees himself as being a man of low status and low station because he came from humble beginnings. and he he really wants to prove himself and he wants to prove himself he wants to prove not himself not only to himself but he wants to prove himself to Katrina and her very wealthy family and that he is deserving of her and so she encourages his ambitions to kind of rise and, and station and whatnot because yeah this is a new America uh, people have, can can go after the American dream essentially and Ichabod can do that so yeah they both encourage each other in very different ways that I really liked and that they saw each other as equals because yeah he he doesn't sit and yell at her or do terrible things you know it is it's 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 a it's a really pleasant love story <laughs> between them considering the time period as for other characters because I did I definitely loved how Katrina was tackled in this retelling I really liked that Alyssa Palombo gave Katrina a voice, gave her things to say and to do and really be involved in the action of Sleepy Hollow. So yeah, I loved Katrina. I really liked her interpretation of, of the Ichabod. Um, and I also liked the character of Charlotte, who is Katrina's best friend. Um, even though this story, this novel, is primarily about the love story between Katrina and Ichabod, it's also probably more about the friendship between Katrina and her friend Charlotte because they've been friends since they were children and then on the negative side uh, Charlotte has been accused of witchcraft in the past so that's kind of something that trails behind her but yeah Katrina never 
lets that get to her. She's always there by Charlotte's side. They are friends through and through. And yeah, their friendship is often tested. It's heavily tested throughout this novel because they're each hiding some secrets from each other about certain things. Um, and yeah, they do. They, they go through some rough patches, but they do. They make it up in the end. And I did. I liked their friendship. It was very strong and positive. Very female-centric friendship. I love that. And I also loved how Brom was used in this book, you guys. Brom in Irving's original story. He's he's rather one-dimensional. He's just kind of a brute and a bully. <laughs> it's kind of the extent of his character. And yet, in this retelling, he is a, a brute and a bully. But there is a bit more depth and some things underneath the surface there with him. And I just, I really loved how Alyssa Balombo used him as the foil for Ichabod and Katrina and Charlotte. I really loved his purpose and function in this book and some things that are revealed. You guys, oh my god, seriously, Brom was kind of one of the more just really intriguing, like, eye-opening characters in this story, how Alyssa Palombo kind of used him. And as far as the writing of this novel goes and the structure or whatever, I, I do think this book read very, very quickly. I felt like I was flying through it for the most part. And it does. It helps that this had very short chapters. I love a book when it has short chapters. <laughs> it, help, it helps the reading go by. So yeah, this book for me definitely read very quickly. I was never bored. I've seen reviews for this book that people felt bored and they felt like nothing was happening. <laughs> I have to I have to disagree with that. I felt like there was a lot going on in this book. I was thoroughly engaged and hooked and intrigued. I was kind of constantly questioning you know, certain plot routes like where something would go. There's definitely a couple little twists and turns in here that I was like, oh my god, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> Um, I do think you need to be a, a older, mature reader for this book, let's put it that way. There are some rather graphic sex scenes in this book, you guys. I, I wasn't really expecting that, to be honest. There are some very, very graphic sex scenes that kind of verge into pornography almost. So yeah, don't let your young children read this book. So yeah, if you can't tell, I freaking love this book. I loved how Alyssa Palombo retold Irving's story. I loved all the characters and how they, they functioned in this book book. And yeah, I definitely recommend this if you like all things Sleepy Hollow. Like I mentioned, if you if you really like Johnny Depp's version, if you like the, the Tom Meissen version, if you, even if you like the Disney version, you, you, I think you might really like this. Um, it was pleasantly surprising to me. I thoroughly enjoyed it from start to finish and definitely would recommend it. So you guys, that's it for my review of the spell book of Katrina Van Tassel. In the comments below, have you guys read this book? Do you plan on reading it? And what's your favorite retelling of Sleepy Hollow? Just let me know. So that's it for this review. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.